Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel, Tech Lead and Partner at West Vault. And today, I know that the last time I was talking to you guys on my last video, we talked about the whole mindset and concept about testing, right? And how I warned about the false security and the fact that testing was very difficult, very manual, very annoying. But unfortunately, there is a real use of testing. And some of you guys actually email me and say whether I could actually give some examples on how to do testing, especially in my native E2 lab. E2, one of the great things about the PHP framework is that it already comes bundled with testing. And the kind of testing that we are actually looking at is something called co-deception, right? And Codeception is a very powerful testing framework that, uh, look, I've had my um, love-hate relationship with Codeception, but overall I find that it's a pretty good standard and has quite a lot of the stuff that you need to do some testing. So today what we're going to do is a very simple test in testing and so that you can actually add it in when your clients ask you like, do you test bro? And say, yeah, yeah, I do, man. Functional testing, that is. So I've gone through, <laughs> I actually wanted to do acceptance testing, but the driver was just too difficult to install, and I just convinced myself that actually functional testing is better. So let's do it today. What I've got here today is a little uh, site hustle site that I'm putting together called SG Stickations. If you're smart, you'll be able to find where that URL is. But basically, I'm taking this to production, and I want to run some tests on it. So it's sort of you know scale it in for the future it's small enough for me to look through but uh you want to test this into the future so i've put out a little test list of i and you want to start your process of doing your testing so take my word for it code deception is probably the best it includes php unit it includes functional acceptance you can put a selenium driver in there this is sufficient for you to run I think 80 to 90 percent of all tests uh, for a very high level production website. So let's all begin with Codeception and what are the URLs for it. I know, take my hand here, let's go really slowly. I know you're dragging, you're like, ah, it's so difficult for you're gonna install by Composer uh, Codeception, Codeception dev level. Okay, I've done that. If you're using E2, it already comes bundled. But in case you don't want to do what you do is just open up your PowerShell in Windows or your Linux command line and copy this and just whack it in there. Okay, so this is step one. You install this and load up Codeception. The next thing you want to do is you want to get the test pushed out. So this is your U2 application here, right? Forget about the test. We know that we have the views, we have the models, we have the controllers, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit about what a manual test would look like for our site. So, this is a site populated with some data, right? And what you would do is that you would just go around and say, okay, if this page lo loads correctly, I want to see the word uh, staycations. You know, I want to see the word staycations on this site. Otherwise, it'll be giving me an error and they'll uh, you know, I won't be able to see anything. So this will be the manual version of doing it. Now, what we're going to do first is that when we're loading this, uh, when you configure Codeception, you have to configure a um, test database. Okay. So if you take a look here, you will see index test here. And this will actually run a configuration with the test. So the easiest way for you to create a test database, right, is number one, you use PHP my admin. Just use PHP my admin, go over the sandbox and create a new database. Just go over here. <coughs> Just create a new database. So I'm using test vacations to create a new database. Just use that first. And then the other trick that I found out Okay, and you're going to go into the bin, the binaries or whatever that thing is. I have no idea actually. Okay, and you're just going to use the command php ye migrate. And if you've been doing your php migrations correctly, this should generate a database for you to do that. So let's, let me give you an example of it. So 
So I've destroyed every one of my tables in this and what I'm going to do is basically my command here and I'll say yes and what has happened is that I've run a migration and all the tables have been re-added into that so that is working the next step of the process right is you want to configure it so you can configure your database inside the um, under config and uh, test under test DB and you can just fill it in uh, with your local host and your uh, name of your database and if you have a password you can also configure that this also lets you run another test scenario of some uh, variables so you want to have like a local storage different folder or something but that's beyond this requirement so once you configure this right and you got your application configured now the next thing is to generate your test cases so what I have is a command here and I'm just going to modify this command, right? So we don't want to generate tests. We want a functional. A functional test is just simply a test running code. So we're going to j open up the page and look for it at on the HTML level, not on the browser level. So let's call this functional uh, home. Okay. And you're going to run this command over here in our base. So here's our thing. Let's get out to the home page and use this. So to give you an example why if it's working or not, let's go and delete all my functional tests. We don't want this one. I did this already. And we're just going to generate one. Problem when you're running a Windows application. So you don't have to follow that. What you do is just run the bat. And that should give us the command that does the trick. So I'm just write that there. Uh, in Windows, you can generate this using the bat. Okay, so that's the command there. So once it's running this, and you see this green little uh, tag over here, then you know option cest. You just have to go with their naming convention. And here we just have a simple function called underscore before. These are commands that you use to load the application before you run the test. Above our scope at the moment, we are only interested in this thing called test, try to test. And what you do is just going to write all sorts of different tests inside here based on the functional tester. So very simple. We're going to go to our documentation here, right? And your usual uh, thing is to check where which page you are on so uh, I do really like the uh, naming conventions of conception so I am on page this so just copy that in there so this basically sends the pointer onto this page and I want to go to the slash page uh, the home page and the next thing I want to do is I want to see some words. Let's go and see some words. So let me look at my application. Okay. And this application is saying that I am. All right. Let's look for word staycation. Much more simpler. Um, com uh, what do you call naming convention? Instead of I assert, I really like this one called I see. So much simpler. And the last thing you want to do is make sure your configuration is correct. That's why I really like the functional. So all it's doing is saying, give me the file system. So it lets me check file system and the U2 application. If you go do this in U2, it is already fired up from the beginning. Um, there are more complicated setups, but this is uh, very useful at the moment. I think most of you guys will find this sufficient. Okay, so let's take it through what's happening. I go to this page, Sash. And I see the word staycations. Okay, very simple, straightforward thing. So once you've configured the test, code up some tests, which we've done. Now we're going to run the test. So again, same thing, use the vendor configuration bat and use run functional. 
This will just run all functional tests. You don't want to run the unit or the acceptance because it just makes it too complicated. We just want to run it separately, so we're going to run this one. So once again, fire up your this, your PowerShell, your command line interface. Over here, let's put that command in there and run it. So as you can see, functional tests, one, try to test, and we have passed the test. One test, one insertion, okay? So that's a successful test. Now let's run another one. Just make another test. And let's call this uh, Malaysia, okay? And I'm looking for the word Malaysia. So I should run it and it should fail. Let's take a look at that. And as you can see, the home test is a pass. I see Malaysia is a fail. Two assertions, one failure. Okay. Usage to make sure things work. Now, one of the questions that uh, a lot of people will ask is, okay, this is so simple, right? This is like, I could have done this in one minute. But imagine, right, that we had an application with 50 pages and you did something that caused one of the pages not to load correctly. All you would have to do, right, is the same thing over here, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page 100, see if that word is there. If it is not, show the problem, and then you just run the same test and you will see where the error appears from, okay? This only gives you the uh, error. You can also put the word step in there, in it, and what will happen is you can see it's running this and it's passed and it's a fail. So very, very simple to run these kind of tests. These are, uh, if you're ever talking to some clients who say, oh yeah, why don't you run tests? Why don't you be more uh, production ready? If you're using the E2 framework, if you're using this kind of stuff, you can use code exception, run a very simple functional test, very basic, just making the page appear, checking whether the text appear, but this puts you in that level of so-called DevOps level, continuous development, all those kind of words. And you can even start charging your clients more money. You can say, hey, this is really robust. It took me hours to do the test. This is tested. Okay, guys. So that's all it is for testing. I hope this is the first toe dipped into it. Don't be too scared about it. I also had the same thing. I really hate testing. Uh, sometimes the clients like, Maybe I just direct my guys to actually do the testing since I hate it so much, but I still know what it's all about to do about the testing and I got to give it to the guys who run the frameworks. Great idea, code exception off the top of the, the it, put this in your name application and if anyone comes around and says, oh, PHP is not robust, swing them, show them my video on code exception. And that's the bottom line because tech lead said so.